Only when the filament voltage and focus current have been set and the ion current has reached safe limits may the EHT be applied to the tube. The EHT is set by adjusting the transformer taps and will vary with transformer loading. A compromise between cathode voltage and cathode current needs to be sought. As gain is related to cathode current, it may be better to run at a lower EHT and a higher collector current in order to reach optimum performance. Use the mod anode tap to set the peak sink current, recalculating the DC input power and checking that 40 to 46% efficiency will be achieved. Reset the collector current as necessary. Whenever possible, reset the EHT to the voltage used on acceptance. To set the black level current, adjust RV1 in the HV pulsar. It has a sensitivity of 173 volts per turn. The bias voltage is that found earlier to give a beam current reduction of 34%. After recalculating the DC input power and efficiency, it may be necessary to decrease the current if the efficiency is found to be significantly different from that achieved on acceptance. After changing the klystron, it will be necessary to realign the cavities. The input cavity Q factor should be checked at the same time. For cavity alignment, an RF sweep must be used. The drive level to the klystron should be kept low so as to remain within the linear part of the transfer characteristic. With a high drive level, the tube will operate non-linearly and give a distorted response. A wideband high power sweep should be avoided as this may damage the image filters or the cavity loads. The RF sweep generator is connected at the output of the mixer through the IPA to take out any detuning effect of the amplifier and cables. A sample of the klystron output is taken via an RF probe and the monitoring panel in the drive rack. Disable the pulsar by removing the BNC connector in the beam modulator control and facilities unit, otherwise this may distort the response. The output coupling loop must be set initially to give maximum coupling. That's in the vertical plane, or 90 degrees on the scale. Keep the output power of the sweep generator very low. The 1 dB bandwidth must be from FV minus 2 to FV plus 6 MHz. Otherwise, if wider, the gain will be low, or if narrow, the regenerated LSB will be higher than normal. The cavities need to be aligned to give a response which is within half a dB of vision carrier over the range FV minus 1 and a quarter to FV plus 5.5 MHz.
set the output cavity for critical coupling, the drive and the pulsar are reconnected, and as a precaution, the drive attenuator set to maximum attenuation. After setting the sync pulse drive control, RV16, to mid-range to prevent sync saturation, a spectrum analyzer is connected to monitor the output signal via the panel below the control and facilities unit. Alternatively, the peak sync power meter may be used. A five-step staircase waveform can be applied to the transmitter via the socket on the front panel of the video comparator drawer. The comparator is switched to test, as shown by the red LED. The green LED shows the presence of video on the program input line. When the modulation levels are approximately correct, the output cavity coupling is reduced progressively, while retuning the output cavity for maximum power at sync. This process is repeated until the sync power is maximized. This will identify the point of critical coupling. Gradually increase the drive level, repeating this process until the correct black level power is reached. The coupling loop must not be rotated beyond this point, but turned back towards the vertical until the sync power drops by a quarter of a dB. Note that the sync power will not be correct at this time. Critical coupling for black level occurs at a lower coupling angle, but at this angle the sinks are undercoupled and the tube is potentially unstable. The effect shown here is for demonstration purposes only and should not be repeated. Having maximized the output power, the output cavity and coupling loop controls must not be touched. It's necessary to retune the other cavities now to bring the amplitude frequency response back within specification. A low level RF sweep is used again for realignment, remembering to disable the pulsar and alter only the first, second and third cavities, detensioning the controls each time. If a large amount of retuning is required, the output cavity tuning and coupling controls will need to be rechecked. When the cavity alignment is complete, the AGC loops must be set up. In the beam modulator drawer, the AGC is adjusted such that, with switch SA on manual, RV4 gives a voltage of 7.0 volts at TP39. The drive output power, with no modulation applied, should be 145 milliwatts and can be set by RV3 in the mixer amplifier. On reconnection of the drive and modulation, the vision attenuator needs to be adjusted to give just over 58% power at black. There must be a 5 to 8% headroom for black, otherwise it may not be possible to correct the non-linearity. The AGC holds the black level drive power to the klystron constant over a change of gain range of plus or minus 1 dB. For this circuit to function correctly, the drive feeder monitor unit must provide at TP11 a 700 millivolt black level video signal. Remember that the drive video waveform does not contain sync pulses. If this video level is not available, a resistor will have to be changed within the unit. If the DC conditions and cavity alignment of the tube are correct, then the gain should be the same as before and the drive attenuator will not need to be changed and the video level will be correct. Once set, the drive attenuator cannot be changed without resetting the AGC system. The drive AGC is now switched to auto and RV6 adjusted to give a black power of exactly 58% as read on the meter. The black level power meter is independent of